Hi, I am Hal, your narrator for today, and uh, this is the production of the uh, October 21st, what? 20th, 1961 demonstration of the rocket belt before President Kennedy. Now, before we get into the video, a number of you have, have emailed me and contacted me and said, look, uh, why don't you have Mr. Graham do his own narration? Why does he have to hire some big professional expensive guy to do it for? And by his own admission, he says, well, he wants somebody younger, he wants somebody with more stage presence, uh, he just works this way, and besides the executive producer wants this way. Now, uh, two things, you know, given that's over, okay? Now, given uh, that, uh, there's two things I want to look forward to, uh, look to in this film, and that is, one, the scuba divers on the side of the lake that are going to save this guy if something goes wrong and he goes in to drink. Yeah, a fat chance, you know, 100 pounds on your back, you can't get out of it, you know, thing. And the other thing is he actually, Mr. Graham actually, excuse me, actually got his feet, he, he took off one time and he had low pressure or something, and he got his feet right in the water, watch for that one. I hope you enjoyed this show, thank you very much. Bye, Mr. Graham, bye. Well, uh, first of all, how did we get there? How did we get from Niagara Falls, New York? to Fayetteville, North Carolina, home of uh, Fort Bragg and the 82nd Airborne. It was a, it was a caribou, for goodness sake. You know, an old 160 knot jerk plane that took us six, seven hours to get there. <laughs> Jeez. Well, okay, here's a rare color shot of that, uh, that, that flight over water. And, and the next picture shows Wendell Moore in the bow tie, and Ernie Krutinger, the big guy, and and Bob Graham, the c civilian coordinator, on the left. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> and here we have a picture of, uh, of the actual flight, and uh, some news uh, clippings from the wonderful results of that flight. <laughs> jeez. <laughs> now what follows is uh, a video of some practice flights we had with an audio of a TV show at that time. Through the air with a rocket strapped on his back. Watch! What is your name, please? My name is Harold Graham. My name is Harold Graham. My name is Harold Graham. Only one of these men is the real Harold Graham. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Jane Meadows, Johnny Carson, and Kitty Carlisle on to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Anison. Jane, nice to have you with us again. Tonight. Thank you, bud. It's lovely to be back. It's been, I guess, about a year. Yes, it has. Don't make them so long next time. And oh. Kitty, welcome back to you. Thank you. Joy to have you with us again. Panel, will you kindly open your envelopes? Ooh. And for the first time tonight, take out your affidavit cards and follow along in the first one with me as I read it. I, Harold Graham, am a rocket engineer. For the past six months, I have been acting as test pilot on a rocket belt program. Wearing this rocket and belt, I have flown above obstacles and skimmed along some 35 feet over the ground. I recently demonstrated the military capabilities of the equipment by taking off from a landing craft and flying 200 feet to the beach. Among the interested spectators at this amphibious assault exercise was the President of the United States. I am the first man in history to fly with rockets strapped to my back. Signed, Harold Graham. you heard these three young and stalwart gentlemen, each claiming to be Harold Graham, rocket engineer, and we'll start this questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bud. Uh, number one, what kind of fuel do you use in your belt rocket? Hydrogen peroxide. Number two, uh, what is the eventual use that you plan to put this uh, kind of uh, apparatus to? Well, we hope the uses will be unlimited. Right now, we're interested in the military, primarily. 
Thank you. Number three, how high can this go? <clears throat> we have gone approximately 30 feet. I see. Number one, could you tell me what safety device do you have in case of a failure of any kind? In case of a failure, you're pretty much on your own. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much on the ground. You know you're not going to go up, right? <laughs> Number Thank you. Jane. Number one, how much does the fuel cost, the hydrogen peroxide cost a gallon? Do you know number two? No. Number three? I don't know. Where do you get this fuel, number one? Number two? Number three? I don't know. You planning an excursion, Jay? Somebody, somebody just gave it to you? You don't, you don't know how it got into your, uh, into your rocket? You don't know how the fuel got into the rocket. Never mind. Asking? I'm asking number one, but number one doesn't seem to know now. Oh, I, 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 I you didn't thought you use the number. You just didn't Oh, number the one. Yes. How do you get the rocket fuel into the yes. belt? It's pure and simple, pretty much like putting fuel into your gas tank, your car. Just uh, you pipe it right in. Johnny. Um. Uh, <laughs> what do you hear from Steve? <laughs> Uh, most interesting film. Uh, number two, uh, do you fly tourist or first class? I mean, is there any difference? Uh, how do you control the, your, your sideways movement? Number Actually, two. that's done with your left hand. With your left we hand? We have two handles on either side. One is the thrust, and the other is the lateral movement, right uh, or left. Uh, number three, what, what speed can you attain uh, with this contraption? We can go approximately 35 miles an hour. Uh, 35 miles an hour. That's maximum. Uh, uh, number one, how do you reverse direction if you want to back up if you want to back up you do the opposite and instead of pushing, forward, yeah. pushing down the two you pull them up Kitty. well i think this is one of the most exciting things i've ever seen because this is what man has wanted to do all his life i caris put those wings on <laughs> and you know flying in a plane isn't the same as flying by yourself how much does this thing weigh number two 120 pounds Number three, what does the spacesuit weigh by itself without the, 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 the rocket belt? Approximately 25 pounds. Number one, number three said he only went 30 yards, but it says here in the affidavit that you went 200 feet. Where did you do this? The 300 feet uh, yeah. foot jump. That was back at the plant. Uh, oh. I guess that's about it. Time for you now for the first time tonight to mark your belt. So will you do so, please? Right now, at this moment, no further questioning and without consultation. Will you vote for number one, number two, or number three? Team of challengers, as is our custom, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one, bud. Uh, these fellows are really... Uh, Willie Stein has done his usual remarkable job of casting the liars. They all look like they were cut from the same mold. It's a pretty good mold, by the way. I think the, the fella has, is embarking on a wonderful adventure. I wish I could help out with that project. Jane, your vote. Well, I voted for number one, although they all look healthy enough to carry 120 pounds on your back, was that it, while flying through the air. It's just mental telepathy. I think it's number one. All right, Johnny, what about you? I voted for number two because I got all three of them last week and I don't intend to break the streak. <laughs> 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 Kitty, taxi, which one are you? The taxi driver told me you got all three last week, so I'm with you. I voted for number two. Number three said that he only went 30 feet. Number one said he went 300 feet back at the plant. Uh, you know, back. Uh, it says he went 200 feet flying to the beach in front of the president. So I voted for number two. Okay, there we have it. Our first die is cast, and we'll find out how true or false it may be as we learn which one of these three gentlemen is the real rocket engineer. Will Rio, Harold Graham, please stand up. <laughs> I go along and second what uh, Kitty said. I think we all feel we're very proud of you. This is quite a new horizon you're attempting there and takes a lot of courage. We're very proud to have you with us tonight. And also proud of Tom and Jane. You knocked off the first one really yeah. easily there. You both got it right. Let's find out about the others now, shall we? Incidentally, I want to tell you where Harold is. Harold is doing this experimental work as rocket engineer for Textron's Bell Aero System. Is that right? That's true. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? Well, my name is Gene Hoban. I represent the Dover Corporation, the elevator division. I sell elevators. <laughs> <laughs> 
To date, that's always been a little safer, I think. <laughs> Number three, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Dennis Diebner. I work for the Kohler Company, and I sell bathtubs and other plumbing fixtures. <laughs> Man, that's, that's really earthbound, that last one. <laughs> Well, we checked the scoring, gentlemen. We find there were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total this time of $500 from Anderson, as well as the gift package of the fine products from the makers of Anderson. We thank you very much. Continued success to you, sir. Good night. God bless you.